skin with, I'm starting by Cream Colours by Meron, and I'm going to take Zombie Flesh on a little egg sponge, and I'm just dabbing that around my face kind of sporadically to kind of break up any redness in my skin and to make it look a lot more dead. Then I'm taking my Skin Illustrator palette and I'm starting with the Rose Adjuster and the Dusty Rose mixed together to create some irritation and kind of redness around my nose and mouth and this kind of helps with that infected gross look and I really like kind of the subtlety that these alcohol activated makeups give. I really like how they look on the skin and yeah I'd really recommend them. They're kind of pricey but yeah they are really really worth it. Then I'm taking my Meron Bruise Wheel and I'm taking the red colour from this and I'm just dabbing it around my eyes and then blending it out as I can't use the alcohol activated paints around my eyes as it will be really irritating so I'm just taking this and blending it out with my finger. Now I'm taking some quite thin liquid latex on a q-tip and I'm using this to create the spots and the like blisters that I would like on the face. So I'm taking this and dabbing it in random areas around my face and then waiting for it to dry. Okay, so now I'm taking that same red from the bruise wheel and I'm going to start doing some contouring, I could say, on my chest area as I knew that was going to be exposed. So I kind of did it around my collarbones and my neck to kind of give them a more protruding look and kind of make it look really sickly and rotted and dead. And then I'm blending that out with a hell of a lot of alcohol as I didn't want it at all um, kind of strong or I just wanted it to be really subtle and kind of a minimal effect. Okay, so now I'm taking Prime Yellow from the Skin Illustrator palette and I'm starting this to colour the spots. So I'm taking this on top, leaving lots of space around the side for irritation that I'm going to add in a second, as I kind of wanted to add the kind of most bright colour first and then go in with the irritation and kind of red colours. Okay, so now I'm starting with Rose Adjuster and the Coral Adjuster to create the um, kind of irritation and redness around the spots. I'm just doing this with a lot of alcohol on my brush to kind of dilute it down and create a really subtle irritation around the blisters.
Okay, so now I'm getting started on that bite mark and I'm just taking the same liquid latex on a sponge and don't use a brush or anything you'll want to keep as liquid latex destroys everything and it won't come off. So I'm just using this around my collarbone area to create kind of an indent um, with the liquid latex and I picked someone with a natural indent like the collarbone so it creates even more of a depth effect even though there's not going to be that much there. So I'm taking this and then I'm going to allow it to dry before cutting it open. Okay, so I added about four or five layers and now I'm just going to cut it open with a pair of nail scissors. Please be careful with this as I have cut myself and stabbed myself multiple times doing this. But I'm just going to roll it up slightly and don't worry too much about the edges as I coloured these, uh, covered these up in a minute. So yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about the edges at this stage. Okay, so now I'm just working on the edges with some more liquid latex, but this is a slightly thinner one. Just going around the edges to kind of thin them out as much as I can. Okay, so now I'm just picking up that liquid latex around the edges to kind of create a more meaty and gross effect. And yeah, I think this is quite realistic if I think if you had a chunk of kind of flesh ripped out of you, it'd kind of not be as neat as I made it before. And then in the middle, I put some more liquid latex down and some um, cotton to kind of create a more meaty indent in the middle. So now I'm working on colouring that bite mark and I'm taking the red from the bruise wheel again with some alcohol, just dilute it. And I'm going to take this and put this inside. The alcohol I'm using is 99% isopropyl alcohol, which is normally the best to use for special effects. So I'm just taking this and putting it inside the wounds, being careful to kind of cover up the whiteness of the cotton to give it a more realistic effect and to make it look like there's nothing there but fleshy, gross, meaty stuff. <laughs> Here I'm just working on those edges again with a little nail tool and I was ripping at some of them and kind of making it a lot more distressed than it was before. I'm working on some depth by taking that same colour from the bruise wheel but the darker version and some alcohol and just taking this on a small brush and going around the sides to create more depth in the wound to make it look deeper than it actually is. I think now onto everyone's favourite part, I'm taking some coagulated blood gel and putting this inside the uh, bite mark. I didn't want to put any runny blood yet because I'm going to put that at the end when I do blood over everything. Um, so yeah, I'm just putting some in with a brush and being careful to kind of drip it down and make it look really distressed and gross. You can add as kind of much or as little as you want with this, but I went with more because it's fun and it looks really good in photos. Here I'm just messing around with some more blood and I'm just going to put this in my nose as I think maybe the zombie has been in a fight so maybe I had a nosebleed, I don't know. I just thought more blood the better and I kind of wanted to try out my new Meron coagulated blood.